Hey, welcome. So I think everyone's here, right? But we just went through um, Will welcome. How's your day going, Will? It's going well. Just uh, been working today and <clears throat> got back home and ate some dinner. So um, yeah, it's been a good day, rainy day. Good, praise God, praise God. So today we're yep. talking about mortification of sin and mm. we just went through the session about um, verse Romans 8, verse... Mm nine we talked about verse nine and verse 13 we talked about by if by the spirit you put to death of the deeds of the body you will live so mm. and i'm just gonna explain through the mortification of sin um so there is five condition again the first is who this is addressed to right this is addressed to all of us we are as believers and the condition is if you right and the means of accomplishment is the spirit. And the duty, the things that we all have to do as believers is put to death the deeds of the body. So, Will, what are some of the deeds of the body mm -hmm. that you have been struggling well, with? <coughs> Excuse me. I think um, for me, it's been uh, more of a issue of the mind. Um, mm -hmm. So thinking about, you know, when you when you have lustful thoughts, you know, what do you, what do you do with that? Um, I think the the two things that are really, that have been really helpful for me um, over the last couple of years in particular have been uh, leaning on particular promises in scripture. Um, so um, even Pastor Figura actually kind of noted that, um, uh, you know, how, how do we, how do we put on this armor? And he talked about prayer, but he also talked about, um, you know, what the cure for um, basically the, the cure for, for faithlessness or walking in spiritual darkness or walking in, <clears throat> walking in sin or walking in um, doubt is to lean in on the promises of God. So one of the, one of the promises in particular that I find helpful when it comes to lustful, thoughts is when it uh is the uh promise that jesus gives um it's actually part of the beatitudes but in matthew <clears throat> he says blessed are the pure in heart um for theirs or for they will see god so when you are um when you're having lustful thoughts when you're when you're giving into that that kind of temptation then you're not seeing god rightly um but the opposite of that is in galatians we read you know uh, if you walk by the spirit then you will not gratify the desires of the flesh so right. the the desire the is there the temptation right. is there <clears throat> right mm -hmm. so the temptation is there um to to gratify those desires that you that you're having this those thoughts that you're entertaining um and to to cut those off um right you have to cut those off with the sword right you can't <laughs> right right that's exactly. the only only offensive weapon is this so i want you guys to relate right. this sword equals to this mm -hmm. okay and you have to cut it off right so right um well we're running out of time kind of so i'm just gonna run through this book real quick but one um, thing Jude yes go yeah ahead. Uh, will i was actually hoping if, if you know the, the chapter and verses of those yeah so uh, the the chapter for uh, for that in Matthew is I think it's Matthew chapter seven. Let me make sure. <clears throat> Matthew chapter five. No, chapter chapter five. Right, chapter five, verse. Let me see. I think I think it's verse five. Oh, verse eight in the ESV, Judah. Verse look at eight. look yeah. at the screen. Verse eight. And then in Galatians, it's also, I believe, Galatians. Galatians five. chapter 5, 16 through 23, 24. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to continue. Okay. So the choicest believer who are assuredly free from the condemning power of sin should also make their business all their day to mortify their indwelling power of sin. And just like what you say, Will, if, if we, so Paul Washer, you guys know Paul Washer? 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he said sin, those lesso fa is like a cobra. So cobra in grass. Okay. So you're like an Indian kid walking in the tall grass, and suddenly this cobra come up. What do you do? What do you do? You gotta pick up the sword. You gotta pick it up and then slice it. Slice the head off in two seconds. Right? There's no time to hesitate. And how do we do that? Right? How do we do cut off that flesh? It's by thinking of Christ's <clears throat> promises or thinking of put to death what's earthly in you, right? And and that's the only way to do it. Mm. And as we continue, right, any questions so far, how to cut it off? Thinking of this image also helps. Like thinking of Christ bleeding drop by drop on me, covering me with blood. And then he's looking at me, staring at me. Did I die for this? Right. Through that, mm -hmm. I, have, I have victory over, you know, pornography or lustful thought or, you know, mm -hmm. just bad things, but I still sin every day in other, other perspectives, right? Loving, not loving brothers, you know, doing other things, right? So anger or impatience, right? So we all sin every day, but the condition, if you, right, if we go back to Romans, Romans 5, ESV, and we're ending in seven minutes, so I gotta get faster, but the condition, if you, right, so if we look at Romans um, oh, sorry, chapter eight, actually, chapter eight, um, 13. I'll highlight the verse two. So chapter eight, 13. We can see the condition, right? If you too is express the certainty of the relationship between the cure and the result, there's a clear connection between the mortifying of the deeds of the body and the living. This connection is not the cause and effect properly and strictly, for eternal life is the gift of God through Jesus Christ, Romans 6, 23. But rather, a means and an end, right? It's a means and an end. The intent of the text is conditional expression, is that there is a certain infallible connection and coherence between true mortification and eternal life. If you use this means, you shall obtain the end. If you do mortify it, you shall live. This then is our main motive of enforcing the duty of our lives. Hmm. And our strength in the performance of this comes through the spirit. As we look at it by it, the spirit, if you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Because all other way of mortification, like, oh, looking up, anti, like eating things, having healthy diet, or going out exercise to get out of your lustful thought, right? People say that. Or take a shower, right? Cold shower, clean it off. All these, are these useful? Have you guys tried these? It's I've not. Never, I've never, I haven't tried anyone that you listed, but I don't think that those would work. Those are never going to work. Yeah. They will always come back. <clears throat> Men may attempt mm -hmm. at this word based on other principles, right? Bodily principle, temperature, right? But they all come short. It's a work of spirit. Because if you can sex... Mr. Figueroa has preached, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, for we wrestle do not against flesh and blood, but against strongholds, demonic strongholds in heavenly places, spiritual powers, right? So, and it's by him, mm -hmm. by Christ alone, that we are to experience victory. Mortification comes from a self-strength carried by ways of self-invention to the end of a self-righteousness. It's the soul and substance of all false religion in the world. Right, Buddhists, they think they can offer like incense, pay money to move their lust. Do you think that works? No. No, no way. Right? People think, oh, let me it play video games. It works perfectly. Yeah. Right. Right. And and that doesn't work, right? Why, guys? Why doesn't that work? Because it's not a permanent solution. It's not. Because it's because they're fighting through the flesh. They're donating the flesh. They're donating to a stone. It's not the living God. And Romans right. twelve and fifteen say we have to offer our own body 
through reasonable works and our thoughts too as a, a sacrifice to God. Because does God see all our thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does, right? Yeah, does. The only way for us to be righteous is through the spirit. And let's consider the duty itself, right? So Romans 8, it also talks about the most important thing that all of us is striving to strive, right? Put to death the deeds of the body. What does it mean by that, right? It's meant by the body. At the end of the verse, end of the verse means the flesh, the flesh of our body. It's an indwelling sin that is in us and the corruptible flesh or lust that is intended. And the outward deeds of the body is expressed, yet the in- inward cause is chiefly intended, right? Because the outward of our works, right? Whatever, watching pornography, doing things that we shouldn't do, right? Dishonoring our body through masturbation. That is, that is the inward cause is chiefly intended. And if we continue to consider more of this, we can see in the beginning of the verse, it said apostle called them deeds that are an outward expression of yielding to an inward lust. Indwelling lust and sin is a foundation and a fountain and principle to all sinful action. Because it's all about the thoughts, right, Will? You talked about mm-hmm. it's from the will. It's from the heart right. of man. The will of right. the flesh yeah. is to die, but the will of a God, First Thessalonians 4, right? It's your sanctification. You all sanctification, being holy, righteous, disciplined men, right? And that is the purpose of this Bible study is to be committed and us sharing our sins to be commit a purity group over this because, you know, we all need to edify and build up one another. So that's why I'm starting this for, and, you know, you guys can feel free to share, you know, it will all be kept. And um, for my own reflection and all, so... But as we mm-hmm. continue to look at uh, more about this, to mortify means killing anything living to death. To kill a man or any other living things is to take away the principle of all its strength, vigor, and power so that it cannot act or exert or put forth any proper actings of its own. In dwelling sin is equal to that person, a living person called the old man. Are you guys mm-hmm. familiar with the concept of old man, the old self? Mm-hmm. okay a living person called the old man with his faulties right the things that you hate right looking at pornography watching that that's an old man that's not the new man right because you guys if you're in christ colossians 3 3 say you're new right you're raised up with christ and the old man he's said to be crucified by christ right he's utterly mortified and slain by the cross of christ He's said to be crucified with Christ, Romans 6, 6, and ourselves to be dead with him, verse 8. This takes place in regeneration, the work of the Holy Spirit, who is planted in our hearts, also opposes to lust of the flesh, which will mentioned in Galatians 5, 17. Mm-hmm. Right? And this whole work is done by degrees, and it's to be carried towards perfection of all our days. Hmm. Thus, it is the constant duty of believers to render the death blow to the deeds of the flesh that they may not have life and strength to put forth their destructive influence. So how do we t- blow that destructive blow on it? Hmm. By this, right? Romans 8, life in the spirit is eternal life. Life in the flesh is death, right? And Christ, if we are with him, we keep his death in our mind. We will not sin. We are Staining it, we're putting that flesh onto the, onto the cross. Mm. Right. So as to end, that's good. That's and that's and it goes with it goes with uh, <clears throat> putting on the new self as well. Because in Ephesians four, um, that's that's where the the old man is mentioned. You put off put off the old man which belongs to your former former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So, yeah, it's it is being put off in Christ. If you're united to Christ in his death, you will also be united with him in his life. So 
um, that kills, that includes the killing of sin in Christ on the cross and the new life that you have, which is what Paul is saying in Galatians is, you know, if you're walking by the spirit, you're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. Um, you're just not. Um, so. Amen. Hmm. Amen. So as we continue, right, this is, thank you for sharing, Will. This is so important. So if you guys have time, read Ephesians 4 and 5 before we come back next time. If you have time, read 6 too. So that's, that's kind of like a little homework. And also, um, the last promise, right? The last promise in this Romans 8, 13, it's life, right? If we look at Romans 8, 13 again, it said, if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, by that sword, that sword, you use that sword to put death to, this, to the deeds of the body. Whenever we want to sin, right? We go to Philippians 3. Focus your mind on what's honorable, what's loving, what's edifying, right? Put to death to your previous flesh, right? So go back to Philippians and look, right? And Colossians 3, 5 is that put to death with your, all your earthly desire, right? Because it's not worthy of Christ. We know that Christ died for us, for our sin. And do we have that agony towards that? right? Mm. And we have to have that agony. I, I agonized. I cried over Christ's death. Mm. I was so painful. And that, that caused me, I don't want to sin again, because I know and I believe he died for us. Mm. And that life promised is eternal life. When we put death, our flesh, we will not go back to our lustful thoughts again. And I'll, I'm already experiencing this. This is crazy good, guys. Like it's, it's free from your mind. Your, your mind is free. You can focus at work. You won't get distracted because if you dwell in this word and continue to disciple, teach this word to other people too. I was discipling at 7 a.m. today. It was, it was like the kid was struggling, right? Masturbation. And then I just read the Bible with him, starting a schedule, telling him, what do you want to be? Like if your life ends tomorrow, what do you want people to call you? Are you a people pleaser? a pleaser of God, mm. right? Mm. And because in him, we have that eternal life. And that life, right, is that the penalty, the opposite of the penalty, it says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die, right? We will die spiritually and physically, right? People were old men, right? People would go to nightclub for like 85, 86 year old. I've never been <laughs> to one, but I know if we keep, keep on having lustful thought, that will be us right? Because we're not, never satisfied. The, mm -hmm. Our heart is like a bag, right? And it's, it, it's, it has a hole in it until Christ fill it. It keeps dropping. You know, when we fill it with the world, the water keeps flowing out. It couldn't satisfy us. And you guys know that, right? If you guys struggled with anything before, right? And pornography or whatever, right? But in Christ, he really fills you up. So that's a life that he will give us the spiritual life in Christ, which we have here right now in this Zoom Bible study, that he have, we have the joy and the comfort and the vigor of life. Yet in this world, you can't get this anywhere, guys. You can't get this package anywhere. You know, maybe in my pastor figure or his Bible study. Well, but <laughs> he doesn't have a Zoom Bible study. That man is crazy busy with his family. So I'm doing this on behalf of Christ, on behalf of the pastors, and on behalf for just his sacrifice for us, that I want all of us to be holy and disciplined men, having a godly family, right? We're all singles, right? And following his word and having godly kids. That's all I care about. And that's all we want, right? And our vigor, our power, and our comfort of our spiritual life comes from, where do you guys think it comes from? comes from christ right why do you think ming is so always so excited about the word why do you think ming can send you this long text <laughs> despite working and all that send you this long text because there's christ dwelling in him <laughs> amen yeah and it's not my self-righteousness right my self-righteousness is like a dirty 
piece of poop in front of Christ. That, that's that, right? And I'm a donkey. I always tell people, I'm a Chinese donkey used by Christ. And, you know, he, he's just great. Amen. Anyway, we need to end in prayers. So, uh, Will, do you mind ending us in prayer? And Judah and John, you guys can chime in. We are doing the prayer, you know, one, one man end, and, and everyone can chime in whenever they want. So, each of us can pray. Sure. Yeah, let's pray. Um, thank you, Will. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, prompting Ming to uh, put this Bible study together. And um, Lord, I just want to ask that you would direct us and guide us in, in uh, what you would have us to, not just to learn with our minds, but Lord, really what Ming was talking about and getting at was just the root of um, understanding, the root of knowing you by your spirit and um, putting to death the deeds of the flesh pray that that would be um, what would be happening as we go through this study um, that you would put off put off our flesh and that you would make us new creations um, in you so um, Lord I pray for Judah and, and John as they as they uh, as they think through and walk through um, just everything that um, they're going through right now in their lives the temptations they may have the um, or the the um, or the directions that they, that the enemy might have them take. And, and same thing for Ming as well. And myself, Lord, that you would, that you would just um, help us, uh, Lord, because we cannot put to death the deeds of the flesh without your spirit. So Lord, we pray and we ask that you would grant us mm -hmm. that, that you would, you would put to death the deeds of the flesh. Um, and we thank you so much that your son died so that that could happen, that we could be done with our sin that we wouldn't have to, um, feed on scraps for the rest of our lives, but that we Thank could you, feed on you and your word. Um, so Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. Um, it's in Jesus' name, um, I pray. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for Judah, Will, and John coming to this Bible study that is kind of under, unorganized and not that great but lord we just ask that you would move in their hearts use the word and move in their hearts every time they come up with lustful thoughts and any thoughts that that's unworthy of you let's swing that sword of the spirit remember that you died for us and call the name jesus jesus won jesus won and let us tell that to our old self jesus won and stab that sword of the spirit if we live to the flesh we will surely die but by the spirit if we live by if we put the death to the deeds of the body by the spirit we will surely live and let us look up to you lord not to the worldly people when there are people that tempt us wearing immodest clothes let, let's look down or look up to you lord that know that jesus didn't get tempted nor i should get tempted when we have those thoughts, cut that off. Let us help. Will help me, help John, help Judah to do it this week. And Lord, we just pray that you help these men in their daily walk with you. Spend their time in prayer. And then let them think of what does it mean to put each one of the armor in Ephesians 6 means. And we just pray that you would let us gather together next time. And thank you for them for coming. In Christ's name I pray. <clears throat> um. Lord, I thank you for placing, uh, especially Mr. Ming, Mr. Swanson. I'm, I, I, I thank you for motivating them to uh, start uh, a group that supports and uh, holds accountable and um, teaches us the word. Lord, I thank you for him, and I thank you for Dr. Swanson. I thank you for Will. I thank you for John, that we have this community, that we have this group to strengthen each other and build each other up i pray that you would continue to strengthen us as we go throughout the week or the weeks depending on how long lord i pray that you would just stick with us and stay with us keep us in your word like mr figura said use the the sword of the spirit the word of god lord that we would stick close to that we could, yes, lord. if we're tempted face with temptation that we would pick up that sword that we would recite that piece of scripture lord yes lord just yes, lord. see you amen i pray all these things in our Savior, Jesus Christ's name.
Amen. 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 Thank you guys. Thank you for joining. And Thank you. does next week work or do you guys want to do it like just two, twice a month? Which one do you guys want to do? Every week? Next week. I um, can do it every probably week. Probably work for me. Um, but it's, okay. it's up to you. I mean, I'd, I'd be all right with, I think I'd be okay with Monday. I'm going to do it Monday. Okay. And yeah. Okay. And the sword will always be here. That's, that's our Bible study insignia. And <laughs> um, I want you guys to try and memorize um, Romans 8, 13, if you guys have time. And um, I don't know what you guys are struggling, um, but feel free to come early and then we will confess first. And this is like a, oh. This is kind of recorded for Pastor Swanson's um, and my own review for later times. But feel free to come earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first 10 minutes, we'll confess and pray for one another. So I'll see you guys next week. And we'll be talking about yep. um, Romans 6. So good having you all here.